the human skeleton is divided into two parts for the sake of uh, making things uh, classified easily. We have the axial skeleton, skeleton in the midline of the body, and it involves skull, the mandible, the vertebral column, the ribs, sternum, and lower down, uh, the sacrum and the coccyx. The appendicular skeleton is involving the bones of uh, the upper limbs and the lower limbs. Now, the upper limb or the lower limb is not attached directly to the axial skeleton. They are attached by a group of bones called girdles and the upper limb has its own girdle and it is called the shoulder girdle and the lower limb has uh, its own girdle called the pelvic girdle. In this presentation, uh, we are going to address the shoulder girdle and bones of the upper limb. Now we want to have a look at the pelvic girdle. What is a pelvic girdle? Pelvic girdle is a group of bones that connect the lower limb to the axial skeleton. Now, uh, in the area of the pelvic girdle, uh, uh, we will see the lumbar vertebra and lower down we will see the sacrum. The sacrum is made of five fused uh, sacral vertebra and the pelvic girder is going to be attached to the sacrum. Now, the sacrum is a triangular structure uh, made of fused uh, sacral vertebrae and the lower down of the sacrum is uh, the last part of the vertebral column which is called the coccyx. Now here is the sacroiliac joint. This is the joint that attaches the pelvic girdle to the, vert to the vertebral column, the axial skeleton, and it is called the sacroiliac joint. It is similar to the, the joint that connects the pectoral girdle to the axial skeleton, which was the articulation of the medial end of the clavicle with the manubrium sterni. So these are the two sacroiliac joints. Now, this is the head of the femur, and uh, it is going to sit into a cup-shaped structure called a stabulum. And this is the beginning of the lower limb. So you can see that the pelvic girdle is going to connect the axial skeleton to the uh, bones of the lower limb. Now, this structure is the idiom. And this structure is the pubis. And the ischium is the inferior part. So this structure, which is surrounded by the, the blue lines, is called 
have bone and the pelvic girdle is made of two hip bones meet anteriorly in the middle by a, a joint called pubis symphysis and this is the sacroiliac joint and this is the point of articulation of the bones of the lower limb to the pelvic girdle and this uh, joint joining the two hips uh, bones to together anteriorly and it is called pubis symphysis This is a superior view of the pelvic girdle, which is made of two hip bones. And you can see that it is uh, an incomplete circle. Now, this is the position of the axial skeleton, and in this case, it is the sacrum. And you can see that there is a gap between the two hip bones posteriorly but if you go anteriorly the two hip bones uh, join together by a joint called symphysis pubis again this is a superior view of the pelvic girdle where you can see that the two hip bones uh, joined together at the midline by a joint called symphysis pubis and it has two sacroiliac joints one on the right and one on the left now the question is is a hip bone made of a single bone? The answer is no. It is made of three bones. The superior one that articulates with the sacrum is called the ilium. The anterior part of the hip bone, the second part, is called the pubis. The special thing about the pubis is the two pubic bones unite in the midline anteriorly by pubis symphysis and the posterior part of each hip bone is made by a third part which is called the ischium uh, here are the very few facts that we have just uh, explained the pelvic girdle connects uh, to the axial skeleton and uh, the lower limb it is ring like bony structure we did not say it is ring structure it is ring like structure because it is incomplete posteriorly here are the three bones that make a hip bone. Now, superiorly, we have the ilium. Anteriorly, we have the pubis. And posteriorly, we have the ischium. Some people wrongly call it ischium. Now, this is the way it is pronounced. Now, these three bones uh, form the acetabulum, the cup-shaped structure that the head of the femur is going to sit in. And this acetabulum is made uh, by the three bones. It is 
not formed by uh, a single bone of the tree. So the head of the femur is going to enter the acetabulum, which is made of the three bones of a hip bone. The idiom will form the superior part and the pubis will form the anterior part and the ischium will form the posterior and inferior part of the Let's have a look at uh, the different parts of the ilium. Now, the ilium is made of the thick lower part, which is called the body of the ilium. And then from the body, you can see that it uh, extends and has its share in the formation of the acetabulum. What is this? This is a flat bone extending from the body and it looks like a wing of a bird. Therefore, it is called the ala. Then, if we look anteriorly, there is a protrusion, a bone elevation. Uh, it looks like uh, a spine. Therefore, this is called anterior inferior iliac spine. So this is the anterior inferior iliac spine. Then superior to it, it is also a spine and it is called anterior superior iliac spine. Then when we go posteriorly, we will find this structure here and it is the posterior superior iliac spine and inferior to it we find the posterior inferior iliac spine then we have the margin of the ala this margin of the ala is is a long thick bone and uh, it is called the iliac crest. Crest is thick elongated bone elevation. Then we have on the lateral part of the ala of the ilium we have lines, elevated lines slightly elevated and uh, for the it is for the attachment of muscles uh, and the muscle attached to this area is, uh, is called the gluteus maximus so these two lines are called the superior and inferior gluteal lines uh, in relation to the gluteus muscle. Then we go to the pubis, the anterior part of the hip bone. The pubis has a body and this body is going to join the other body of the other pubis and make a joint called pubis symphysis. From the body uh, a long elevation called a ramus and because this is superior it is called, called the superior ramus of the pubis and as you can see the arrow is pointing at the share of the pubic bone in the formation of the acetabulum and again from the body of the pubis uh, another ramus that will go down and posteriorly and it stops. It does not uh, complete all the, all the way uh, and 
this is described as forming a part of the inferior ramus. Now, the posterior and inferior part uh, of the hip bone is the ischium. The ischium has a body, and from this body, uh, the ischium is going to share in the formation of the acetabulum. So now we are sure that we know that the acetabulum is made of the three components of uh, a hip bone. Now, if we go lower down from the body, you find a large rough egg-like elevation. This is called ischial tuberosity. This is the the bone you sit on when you sit uh, uh, on a chair. You feel that you have uh, been sitting on two bones. You are sitting on two ischial tuberosities. And if we look posteriorly, there is what is called the ischial spine. You see the cross section is triangular and has a pointed uh, end. This is the ischial spine. And from the ischial tuberosity, uh, a ramus goes anteriorly and joins the ramus coming from the pubis to make the inferior ramus. So the inferior ramus equals part of the pubic bone and part of the ischial bone. Therefore, it may be called ischiopubic ramus. Now, between the superior ramus and the inferior ramus and the acetabulum, we have a big foramen. What is a foramen? A foramen is a hole. And this foramen is called obturator foramen. We will know later why it is an obturator foramen, simply because there are two muscles attached to it, one on the external side and one on the internal side of this foramen. Then, look what we have here, a curved line. And this is another curved line, but it is larger than the first. The inferior one is called the lesser, smaller, sciatic notch. A notch is a depression that you can put your finger and swing around. So this is the lesser sciatic notch. The question is, where is the lesser sciatic notch? As you can see, it is between ischial spine and ischial tuberosity. So the lesser sciatic notch belongs totally to the ischium. While the greater sciatic notch belongs to two bones. It belongs to the ilium and ischium. This is what? This is the greater sciatic notch. So, a hip bone has three parts. Now we are summarizing or writing our notes about what we have seen. And 
these are the ilium, which is the widest and largest, the pubis, the most anterior, and ischium is the posterior and inferior. What do they form? They form a cup shaped socket, which is the acetabulum, and this is where the head of the femur sits in. This is a review of parts of the ilium. You know what structure is this? This is the body of the ilium. This is its share in the formation of the acetabulum. And this is the ala of the ilium. And this is the iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine, anterior inferior iliac spine and the posterior superior iliac spine and posterior inferior iliac spines. And for sure you remember what is this structure. It is the greater sciatic notch. And the ilium forms part of this notch. Now in this slide we can see the inside of the ala. The previous slide we were looking at uh, the ilium from outside. When we look from the inside there is a depression in the ala. The ala is not flat on the inside. It is curved and has a depression and of course this is called iliac fossa. A fossa is a depression in a bone and it is in the ilium therefore it's called iliac fossa. Now we have seen this structure which is the top part of the ala, thick long bone elevation and this is a description of a crest, therefore, this is called the iliac crest. Now, when we go to the ischium, the ischium is the posterior and inferior part of, of the hip bone. If we look at the green colored structure, it is posterior and inferior, and it is large and rough. It's not smooth. This is called ischial tuberosity. Now, what is this image telling me? It is telling me that, look at this green structure. What is this green structure? First of all, it's in the midline, and secondly, it is between two pubic bones and this is called pubic symphysis. Now, the pelvis is divided into two parts. The part between the two ali, the right and left ali, parts of the iliac bones is called the false pelvis. It is wide. Now, then we have this green line. This green line is called pelvic inlet or pelvic brim. It is shared by the sacrum the ilium and the pubis. If we look down inferior to the pubis symphysis, we can see this green structure which is in the form of an arch. This is called sub 
क्यूबिक आर्च और क्यूबिक एंगल वट स्ट्रक्चर आर मेकिंग द सब क्यूबिक आर्च द एंसर इज द इंफीरियर रेमस वन ऑन द राइट वन ऑन द लेफ्ट द क्वेश्चन नाउ इज वट मेक्स द इंफीरियर रेमस is it one bone or two bones the answer is of course you know now that the inferior ramus is made by uh, the pubis pubic bone and lower down and laterally it is made by the ischium now these are the details of the ilium and by now you know it and you can go through it uh, quite easily the inner surface is the iliac fossa and it is concave that's why it is a fossa external surface is convex and it has lines for attachment of luteal muscles you know the iliac crest the long uh, elevation at the top of the ala of the ilium and the iliac crest has four spines two anterior and two posterior and there is a greater sciatic notch which Uh, the ilium forms the superior part of it and uh, the the This is like here uh, shows in color that the hip bone is made of three bones pubis shares in the formation of acetabulum and has superior ramus and inferior ramus and here is uh, another repetition of the three bones that make the hip bone and the blue color is the superior ramus of the pubis this pink is the body of the pubis and the white part is the part of the pubis that is going to form uh, the inferior ramus now you can go through these details of the pubis and uh, it uh, connects with the pubis of the other bone by a joint in the midline called pubic symphysis and has superior ramus and inferior ramus it is shared by the ischium the three hip bones now these are the details of the ischium body shares in the formation of the acetabulum ischial spine extending from the body part of the greater sciatic notch and the scapulosity and the part forming the inferior ramus and this is the obturator foramen what are the boundaries of the obturator foramen there are two bones that form the obturator foramen 
ischium and the pubis. Ilium is not sharing uh, in the formation of this foramen because it is most superior. And this is the ischial tuberosity. And this is obturator. These are the details of the ischium uh, nodes that we have just uh, talked about by the inferior ramus and the superior ramus. is not formed by the ischium. This hip bone, which the both of these two hip bones, they make the pelvic girdle, is also called the, the coxal bone. You know what structure is this? It is a meeting point in the midline between the bodies of the two pubic bones and it is pubis symphysis. And this is the joint that connects the pelvic girdle to the axial skeleton and it is the sacroiliac joint. Here is the right one. This is an image showing me the what is true pelvis and what is false pelvis. If you look at your right, uh, it is colored blue. The whole cavity is called the true pelvis. While to your left, the brown colored cavity, which is larger than uh, the true pelvis. This is called the false pelvis. And what separates the false and true pelvis is a line made by the sacrum, iliac bones, and pubic bones. This is called the pelvic inlet. This is the false pelvis above the pelvic inlet. And this green line is the pelvic brim or the pelvic inlet and involves uh, the sacrum, ilium, and pubis. What is this? blue area. It is below the pelvic brim and it is the true pelvic cavity. That's the true pelvis. Here is a lower part of the vertebral column the two hip bones and you can see the two femurs attached to the pelvic girdle and this is the point of contact between the pelvic girdle and the axial skeleton it is the sacroiliac joint and this joint inferiorly is between the, the body of the two pubic bones this is pubis symphysis and this cavity is the true pelvis. The green marked bone is the femur. It is the bone of the thigh and it articulates with the pelvic girdle. It is a long bone. It has an upper end shaft and lower end. The point of articulation of 
the femur with the pelvic girdle is uh, a ball shaped head. What are the features of this head? First of all, it is more than half a circle, and when you compare it to the head of the humerus, the head of the humerus is less than half a, uh, a sphere or a circle, while the head of the femur is more than uh, half uh, a sphere or a circle, and it is covered by articular cartilage, a hyaline type of articular uh, does the head of the femur has any special feature? The answer is yes. If we look at this image, you can see that the head of the femur has a depression. And this depression uh, serves as attachment of a ligament that is going to fix the head of the femur to the acetabulum and it is called fovea capitis. Capitis means the head and fovea means a small rounded uh, depression. Then any constriction inferior to a head is a neck and here is the neck of the femur. If you compare it to the anatomical neck of the humerus, uh, that of the humerus is narrow one, and while the neck of the femur is a very evident uh, structure. So it is head attaching to the neck, and this is the neck of the femur. Here we have uh, six images showing the different features of the upper end of the femur as being uh, a long bone. Now, we have seen the head of the femur and then the neck of the femur. And if you go steadily, you would find this big, rough, bony elevation it is large and it attaches uh, muscles and it is called the greater trochanter. Greater because it is bigger than uh, another one and trochanter is a large oval rough shaped bony elevation and uh, going down below the neck, uh, see uh, a similar structure to the greater trochanter, but it is smaller. Therefore, this is uh, the lesser trochanter. Now, if you look back, back at the greater trochanter, and if you are asked what is its position, the answer is going to be it is lateral to the neck. If you go to the lesser trochanter and you are asked about its position, uh, you can see very evidently that it is inferior to the neck. Then we are still in the issue of greater and lesser trochanters. Now, anteriorly, in the upper end of the femur, there is a slightly elevated line between the greater and lesser trochanter, and this is called intertrochanteric, of course, because it is between the two, and it is intertrochanteric line. This is anterior. If you go posterior, then the intertrochanteric structure is not a simple line in a bone. It is an elevated bony structure 
therefore it, it deserves the description of being a crest and it is called intertropenteric crest. Now we go to the other parts of the femur. If we go lower down, inferior to the trochanters, you can see a long elevation, and this is for attachment of gluteal muscles. Therefore, it is called gluteal tuberosity of the femur. Now, if you go to the second image to the right, you can see this green line, and this is uh, an elevation as one line, and as it comes down, it splits into two lines to include a triangular structure. This line is called linea aspera. So this is linea aspera. <clears throat> then you go more right and you find this triangular green area. Uh, this is the area between uh, the splitted two lines of linea aspera and it is behind your popliteal fossa you, you go to your knee and you feel posteriorly and you can feel the bone there this is called popliteal surface of the femur and you reach the lower end of the long bone and you can see that there are two egg-shaped uh, elevations. These are called the condyles of the femur. And posteriorly, there is a depression. And this depression is a fossa. Therefore, it is called intercondylar fossa. Where do I see the intercondylar fossa? I see it in the lower end of the femur posteriorly. Can I see it anteriorly? The answer is no, I cannot. Then, you look at the lower end of the femur anteriorly and you find a little elevation and this little elevation is called adductor tubercle it is a point of attachment of muscles that move the thigh medially inwards <clears throat> and you can see it anteriorly and posteriorly this is anterior view and this is posterior view. Then we come to the two egg-shaped big uh, elevations in the lower end and they are called condyles of the femur and the femur has two condyles. This is the medial epicondyle anteriorly and this is the medial epicondyle posteriorly. And then we have the other one, which is the lateral condyle of femur, which can be seen anteriorly and can also be seen posteriorly. Another features of the lower end of uh, the femur, here we can see 
uh, a little elevation this is called lateral epicondyle something similar we saw in the lower end of the humerus it can be seen anteriorly and also posteriorly it is <coughs> superior to the lateral epicondyle and then we have a medial epicondyle this is anterior view and this is posterior and posterior view now in the lower end of the humerus the medial epicondyle was much larger than the lateral here in the femur they are about the same thing <coughs> Then, lower down, we can see anteriorly that the area between the two condyles of the femur, there is a smooth area covered by cartilage. This is for articulation of the patella. Therefore, this is called patellar surface of the femur. There is no place for the patella posteriorly. the next few slides uh, it is good practice for you to identify the different structures and it is uh, animated and labeled so you can go through it uh, very easily these are the two trochanters the intertrochanteric line anterior and the crest posterior, the gluteal tuberosity, and this colored and labeled uh, diagram of the upper end of the femur is a good exercise for you to have a look at. Uh, of course, this is the shaft or the body or the diaphysis of the femur. And you know what structure is this. And this is the linea aspera on the posterior surface of the femur. And the linea aspera has a single line when it goes down it splits into two lines and between the two lines is the popliteal surface and this is the popliteal surface of posterior part of the shaft and then you have the condyles the adductor tubercle and epicondyles of lower end of the femur and then intercondylar fossa between the two condyles and you see the patella surface anteriorly only and this is the patella this is the patella what kind of bone is the patella it is a sesamoid bone present in a tendon of muscle and is triangular in shape. Uh, the base is superior and the apex is inferior and it sits on the patellar surface of the femur. Uh, the articular surface, the inner surface, is made of unequal uh, facet. What is a facet? A facet is a very smooth area uh, of a bone. It is a smooth area of a bone and here the patella on its posterior surface has two unequal facets 
the lateral one is larger than the medial one. Here you can see that the patella is inside a uh, tendon of uh, a muscle. Next and inferior to the knee joint is tibia. The tibia is a very important bone because it is weight bearing. The weight of the body is transmitted from the femur to the tibia. The tibia is a long bone. It has upper end and lower end and shaft and it is the medial bone of the leg. At the upper end, it articulates with the lower end of the femur. Which structures of the femur? It is the condyles, the egg-shaped bony elevation. Now, if the femur has uh, a medial condyle, then it sits on a medial condyle of the tibia. And the lateral condyle of the femur sits on the lateral condyle of the tibia. And between these condyles, you have a spiky elevation called intercondylar eminence. That's what? That's the medial condyle of the tibia. And this is the lateral condyle of the tibia. And these are the condyles of the femur. These structures are going to make the knee joint. If you look at this bone here, which is lateral, it is called the fibula. This fibula is a long bone, it has upper end and lower end in the shaft. And as you can see in this image, the head of the fibula is articulating at the side of the lateral condyle of the tibia. And it is not weight bearing does not share in transmitting weight to the foot. So now we know where is the lateral condyle of the tibia and inferior to the two condyles you see a rough slightly elevated area and you can feel it on your tibia it is subcutaneous and is for the attachment of muscles and this is called tibial tuberosity now when we go lower down to the lower end of the tibia we find a projection of bone. This is called medial malleolus. Can you feel your medial malleolus? Of course, go on the medial side of your leg. Once you reach the foot, you find a rounded elevation. And this is the medial malleolus. As we have said very shortly that the lateral bone of the leg is the fibula and the fibula in its upper end articulates with the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of the tibia and the shaft has uh, hardly any feature and when it comes down 
it forms uh, a bony elevation called lateral malleolus and you can feel it on your lateral side of your ankle you can feel there in this region the medial malleolus of the tibia and the lateral malleolus of the fibula then the tibia and the fibula are going to articulate with the tarsal bones uh, that of the upper limb are called carpal bones here they are called tarsal bones they are not eight as in the carpal bones they are seven in the tarsal bones now the bone that is going to receive the weight of the body is the talus it articulates with the lateral and medial malleoli of tibia and fibula so the weight is going to reach the talus that is why the talus is a very important uh, tarsal bone The next tarsal bone, which is the largest and the most posterior, is the calcaneus. can also be called calcaneum. And when <clears throat> you walk, the first point to reach the floor is the calcaneus which is posterior to the talus and most posterior of tarsal bones. Now we have a bone that articulates with the talus and it's called navicular because it looks like a boat and uh, this is going also to receive uh, part of the weight. Then, lateral to the navicular is the cuboid. Now, why it is called the cuboid? Because it has four sides and it looks like a cube. Then we have three bones that have the same name in addition to its position. So this is medial cuneiform. Why it is medial? Because it articulates with the big toe. So this is the medial. This is the medial on the inferior side. And as you go laterally, it is the intermediate cuneiform. And then you go laterally, it is the lateral cuneiform. So we have seven tarsal bones. Talus, calcaneus, navicular, cuboid and we have the cuneiforms. Then we have the metatarsals. They are long bones, no special features about them. Uh, same as the proximal phalanges and the middle phalanges and distal phalanges. You remember that the thumb has two phalanges, proximal and distal, while others have three. Uh, it is the same situation in the big toe. Now, 
there is an important issue that we have to discuss and this issue is the curves of the foot which involves the tarsal bones and metatarsals and pharynges and <coughs> these curves are three one on the medial side of the foot the other is on the lateral and there is a transverse now when you stand up on the floor your foot is not flat it is curved now there are three arches of the foot two are longitudinal and one is transverse here is an image of the, the medial or the inner arch it is made of calcaneus navicular medial cuneiform and metatarsals remember the talus is not in here is another view of the medial longitudinal arch <coughs> This is another example of the medial longitudinal arch and the blue arch is the transverse the transverse one. So the medial longitudinal arch is made of the calcaneum, talus, navicular, three cuneiform bones, the first three metatarsal. I'm not sure if the talus is involved or not. We have to check it. This is the lateral longitudinal arch. It is shorter and lower than the medial uh, longitudinal arch. The medial longitudinal arch is higher arch and the lateral is is lower arch it's made of calcaneum cuboid fourth and fifth metatarsal bones the transverse arch uh, is made of bases of metatarsals the cuboid and the three cuneiform bones thank you